Please stand if you're able and join us in the gathering music. Come now is the time to worship. You can have a seat unless, um, let's see, if you have been coming to this church for five years or more, go ahead and stand up. If you have been coming to this church for 10 years or more, stay standing. 20 years or more, stay standing. There's math going on over here. If you are a charter member of this church, stay standing. I, oh, 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 uh, yeah, let's have some, yeah. 37 years and 364 days ago, uh, y'all signed the paperwork to officially, officially be a church. Some of that spirit was already in the air, but tomorrow is the church's 38th official anniversary, birthday, I don't know what the right word is for a church, um, but... But isn't that good news that God has been blessing this place for so long? Isn't it good news? Can you imagine the amount of prayers, of deep prayers in this place? Can you imagine the amount of little children giggles? Some of you remember those days where the Sunday school was just pushing chairs around. Can you imagine the pain that was expressed and the hugs that have been held and the songs that have been sung and how God has shown up in our lives so much in 38 years here? do so much to the heart and spirit of so many of you uh, from back then and all the way until today. Now, um, it takes, I don't know, it takes volunteers to make an organization. It does not take volunteers to make, uh, to make love happen. And so over all these times, all these people who've given so much of their lives, we thank you. Um, we thank God for walking us through the arguments and the disagreements about how to build a second part and how to build a third part and how to pay for this and how to do this and how to hire this, all those things. Through all of that, God's spirit has followed. The definition in the Presbyterian book of order is a church, the church of Jesus Christ, is the provisional demonstration of what God intends for all humanity. I'm going to say that again because it's one of those powerful definitions. A church is the provisional demonstration of what God intends for all of humanity. We have been provisionally demonstrating the drama of faith and life in this place for so long. I pray that God continues to bless this place so we can be a blessing to our neighbors. Amen? Amen. All right, we'll listen to Todd center us for that.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. Over 2,000 times, this church has been called to worship. Filled with echoes of praise. People long ago brought their troubles to God. Now we are to lay our burdens down. Here we have been inspired to live compassionately. These walls and this young and old, rich and poor, orthodox and radical, our diverse family seeking God's presence. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand that. Understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory on all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I invite you to open up your hearts and your hands to hear the word of God. This is from John 21, 4 to 7. At dawn, at dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples did not know who it was. He called out, fellas, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right side, right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did that, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. The disciple uh, Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that, he put on his tunic. He had stripped for the fishing work and he jumped right into the water. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about 100 yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went back aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples asked him, who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus said, then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had uh, appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these, yes, Lord, Peter, I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question the third time. 
he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And I would invite any of the children to come forward. Any parent is welcome, grandparent is welcome to join them. Pull up a chair so you can sit in that. You good? Okay. Um, Halloween, did you dress up last year? You think so? You're, you you kind of sort of remember. What about isn't it? What noise does a sheep make? Okay, we're not surrounded by sheep. Obviously, these are people here, and in this that Miss Paula just uh, says all are like sheep. Taking care of, take care of all. I need you to. And Peter says, okay. Yeah. And Jesus said, I really want to take care of sheep. First, you need good water, and you got to keep Maybe have a little pen. 